racing towards the first and King Spruce is one of the first to show. King Spruce within the centre of the course, Burnt Oak over on the far side in the centre of the course, Richardstown, and as they jump the first, Burnt Oak lands in the lead from Richardstown, Kilkilla in his right up there with them, and they're all safely over the first, all 21 over the first, they come down to the second now, Burnt Oak over on the far right of the picture from Kilkillo in right up there with Richardstown and Rundamy behind them and then come points pass and they're all over the second and racing down now towards the chair with Burnt Oak with the advantage from Kilkillo in then comes Eggnog, Smith's man on the far side on the near side is Richardstown then points pass and Rundamy Burnt Oak lands in the lead from Kilkillo in second a faller there is Eggnog, Eggnog's a faller and King Spruce has gone as well coming down to the water and Burnt Oak is the leader from Kilkillo in, in second just behind Kilkillo and his Richardstown and then run to me and points pass and then Smith's man. Then 14 is Express. The back marker at the moment is Daltmore. So as they pass the Grand National start and make their way down towards the Melling Road, Burnt Oak is the clear leader from Kilkillo and run to me. Richardstown on the outside. Smith's man on the inner. Just in behind them come points pass and then a gap to 14 is Express. They cross the Melling Road. Burnt Oak clear and over to John Hanmer. And Burnt Oak has a clear lead from Kilkillerin as they cross the Melling Road. Run to me is third. Richardstown is fourth. Fortinus Express creeping up towards the outside. Points Pass is close behind the leaders, and so is Smith's man. They're at fence number five now. Burnt Oak jumps it well in the lead. All the leaders over safely. Knock Hill landed a bit steep, but they're all all right as they come to fence number six. Burnt Oak on the inside from Kilkillerin. Run to me. Then Richardstown, Points Pass, Smith's Man, 14 Express, Master Tursell, then St. Alice Ann and Romany Count, and they're all over that, but coming to the next big ditch, Burnt Oak swishes his tail, jumps it well. Kilkillow in over second, then Richardstown third, Smith's Man four. A faller there towards the back was Galleon Beach, and another faller was Richard Pittman's former mount, Shamrock Bridge, as we join Julian Wilson. And still, Burnt Oak, the horse who blazed the trail in the Grand National last year. He's pressed by Richardstown towards the outside. Kilkillone is still well there. As they come to the one before Beaches, and Burnt Oak is down. A crashing fall, Burnt Oak, but all the rest of them are over. And coming down to Beaches, that is Kilkillone in the lead from Richardstown and points pass. Towards the outside is Run to Me and Richard Dunwoody. Behind those is the grey Smith's man as they come to Beaches Brook. And over Beaches, Kilkillone, Richardstown, points pass. The lead is all over. Knock Hill pecked slightly on landing, but everything that's still on its feet is over Beaches. Daltmore is last over it as they jump the one after the 23rd fence. Kilkello and over from Richardstown and points past and Smith's man, the grey on the inside, going well. Then run to me on the outside of 14 as Express. Behind that is Master Tursell and Romney Count. Then a gap back to St. Alisan and Abo Ace as they come to the canal turn. Kilkello in the top weight over it from points past and Smith's man on the inside. Richardstown and Robert Earnshaw towards the outside. Then back to 14 as Express, creeping his way towards the leaders. Run to me is after that, and Master Tussell and Romney Count as they jump Valentine's Brook. And all the leaders over Valentine's Brook. Up front, Kilkillane from Richardstown on the outside of points pass. Then Smith's man, then a gap back to 14 as Express, and run to me as we rejoin John Hammer. And that was five from home, and Kilkillane in the leader from points pass and Richardstown. Then Smith's man, run to me, 14 as Express, Master Tussell, St. Alice Ann. And then Romney Kite, the last ditch, four out, and Kilkillerin over first, and Richardstown a faller there. Richardstown went at that, and as they go to the third last, run to me was another faller, but they're at the third last now. It's Kilkillerin over first from points pass, then Smith's man, Master Tursell, Fortinas Express, and Alice Ann, Knock Hill, Abo Ace, and Romney Count, and they're well clear of the remainder and crossing the Melling Road with two to jump. Points pass joins Kilkillerin and over to Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, points pass and Kilkillo in together. Master Tursell is in third. Fortinas Express is still making ground on the outside of Smith's man. Then comes St. Allison trying to get into the picture and then Knock Hill. Racing down towards the next. Kilkillo in and points pass being chased by Master Tursell and Smith's man. As they come down now towards the second last fence in this Whitbread Trophy. And on the near side, points pass. On the far side, Kilkillo in. Master Tursell, Smith's man, and Knock Hill just in behind them. 
14ers Express is still making progress and it's a wide open race as they come down towards the last. Points pass, Kill Kill Owen, Master Tersel, Smith's man just in behind them. And then 14ers Express and St. Allison. And points pass and Kill Kill Owen land in unison there. It's points pass and Kill Kill Owen. Kill Kill Owen with the advantage from points pass. Smith's man, the grave, improving just in behind them. Master Tersel racing down towards the elbow. Smith's man making ground over on the far side. Looks as though he's going to take it up. And Smith's man has taken it up now from Kill Kill Owen. And Rock Hill is in third. They're racing up towards the line. And Smith's man has sprinted clear of Kill Kill Owen as they race to the line. Smith's man is the comfortable winner of the Whitbread Trophy handicap. It's going to be very close for third with Knock Hill just getting up to beat Kill Kill Owen in a photo with points past fourth and fifth Master Turtle. Then 14 is Express and St. Allison and behind them came Romany Count and Dortmore and behind Dortmore is Beacon Time and so the result of the Whitbread Trophy handicap first number 12, Smith's Man owned by Smith Mansfield Meat Co. Limited, trained by Mrs. Jenny Pittman and written by Mark Perrett and it's a photograph for second place. A photo between Knock Hill and Kill Kill Owen, but uh, no doubt about the winner. And what an omen this for the Corbier stable in the Grand National. Smith's man, the brilliant winner, ultimately, after showing a tremendous turn of foot, this son of uh, Gavardine out of Doongate, as we can review with Richard Pitt. And what a terrific race it had been. Very fast from the outset, as we expected. Kill Kill Owen in front at this stage, and he's got 12 stone on his back, remember. But there is the grey looming up. 14 has expressed had run a good race. He's not very far behind. St. Alison on the left of the picture. Then there's 14 has expressed, and you'd expect he was near enough there if he was good enough. But at this stage, Kill Kill Owen still in front and going well. Master Tersel in the green colours looks if that's going to challenge. Knock Hill on the far right rail really coming with a run but it's the gray horse with 10 stone on his back remember there's two stone difference between these two horses that are really firing towards the uh, elbow now uh, but two stone is a very big difference and it's made a difference here on this run in before now and it will do so again but smith's man taking advantage of the weight strides away to a good victory it's his fifth win of the season and by far his best he's jumped superbly all the way around and Mark Perrett certainly could do with this winner, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people shouting for him. It's a very clear-cut win in the end. Smith's man, the 10 to 1 winner. And we're still waiting the outcome of the photo. As we see, the very clear winner return to the winner's circle. Joy Carrier, okay, after her fall. There was Graham McCourt who read eggnog. Joy returning with her trainer, Bob Champion. And Smith's man, after his fifth success of the season. Thirty-seventh winner of the season for Jenny Pittman, and number thirty for Mark Perrett. What a brilliant ride this Gray gave him. News that we're... And second was Knock Hill. Third, Kill Kill Owen. And fourth, Points Pass. The distance is eight lengths and ahead. So just to recap, the winner, number 12, Smith's Man, owned by Smith Mansfield Meat Co. Limited, trained by Mrs. Jenny Pittman and written by Mark Perrett. Second was number 13, Knock Hill, owned by Mr. Peter S. Thompson, trained by John Weber and written by Anthony Weber. And third, number one, Kill Kill Owen, owned by the executors of the late Mrs. S.W.N. Cullen.
trained by Jim Draper and written by Ken Morgan. Fourth was number 11, who did best of the Grand National entries who are still could be involved on Saturday, points pass. The others being Fortinas Express and Dortmoor. All three having got round safety. Jenny there in the place she'll be hoping to be on Saturday. After Corbier has attempted to win a Grand National for the second time. I imagine Jenny's joy at greeting her winner will be tempered somewhat by anxiety <coughs> regarding her jockey, Peter Scudamore, who looked as though he may have had a pretty shaking fall on Burnt Oak. Well, well Jenny, <laughs> Jenny Pittman, a lot of excitement going on behind us. You've got a smashing Grand National horse on Saturday, and whatever happens this year, you've got a Grand National prospect next year. Yes, John, I always thought that Smith's man would be a, a national candidate. I didn't know whether he would be a Grand National candidate, but some of the nationals, he jumps and he stays. Unfortunately, he's still got a problem with his wind. We had him hobdayed last year, and he still makes a bit of a noise, so he's got to have another operation this summer. Uh, to try and improve him there, Jenny. I have to no, say he's we've, printed home. We've had uh, one or two tricks up our sleeve, which we put into practice, and I think it's helped today, no doubt. And Mark Perrick gave the horse a fantastic ride. I, I thought, being seven years old, he might be a little bit too young, but he's always been a good jumper. And I knew if he settled, he'd jump, but in his races on ordinary tracks, he pulls very hard and carries his head rather high, but he adapted well today, and I was absolutely over the moon. When he jumped beaches, I thought, we're in there, kid. He was only fourth or fifth at the last, but when Mark asked him, he sprinted home. Yes, he's, he's, he's a good horse. I mean, I bought the horse at Doncaster Sales for 2,600, and in fact, I'd been and looked at the horse and walked away from him because I thought he'd been in wire, and he had some funny marks on his hind leg, and I'd been and looked at one or two others, and I thought, I'll go back and have another look at that horse. And he hadn't been in wire, he'd just got funny marks on his hind legs. And uh, I bought him, and Mr Smith was with me, and he said, I'll have that horse off you, Jenny, if you haven't bought him for anybody. And, and fair play to Mr Smith, he's, he's been very patient. The horse had that problem with his wind last year, and I said, look, Arthur, we've got to stop him and do something with him, positive. And he never complained, and he's been very patient. And, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon that the horse has won for him today. And what would be the plan? Would you retire him now and wait for next season, or will you go on again because he's quite well handicapped? Yes. Uh, I can't see him running again this season. I, he's been very busy, and I would like to give him a rest now and uh, have him operated on early next year. Well, let's look forward to Saturday because old Corbier is coming back here again. The ground perhaps might be a little bit faster than you want, but he's in very good form, I gather. Yes. If The only thing that I'm slightly worried about... Um, Peter Scudamore took a crushing fall and lay there, and I don't know yet how, how well he is. Um, but the horse himself, if he'd got seams, they'd be bursting. <laughs> He's, that, that race at Chepstow that he won, now people think horses are animals and don't know about these things, but since he won that race at Chepstow, he's absolutely popping his cork and he's in fantastic nick. And whatever happens Saturday, he's going to run a cracker. Jenny, as ever, in tremendous form. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well, as ever, that was a terrific race and jumping is the name of the game. And right from the start, Burnt Oak went off and how he jumped the chair, well, it made me wince. It was fantastic. With me, Bill Smith, of course, us old jocks, we, we <laughs> tend to sit back a bit, Bill, watching fences like that being jumped so well. He really did do a good job with the chair. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Terrific jump. But he was just half backing off his fences a little bit and just measuring them. He definitely didn't get it right uh, the one before Beaches, though. Well, of course, no. As they go down, uh, what were your <coughs> thoughts here? Well, he just, as I say, been just backing off. See, his tail goes up there. I don't know if he usually does that, but, I mean, he wouldn't have got away with this mistake at Ludlow, never mind Liverpool. He's really run right into it. That's I mean, horrible. Yes, horrible. nasty. And Peter, of course, see the horse is coming yeah, down. Yeah, right on his legs there. It's I mean, the... oh just catching hold of him and uh, it didn't look good but the horse is okay we haven't news yet of peter but of course the race went on and four from home there was a little bit more action when kilkill owen still in front here and richardstown third and on the outside he'd been going well richardstown but he again he makes a mistake here that you just don't get away with it you know and he's gone falling right down that fence then kilkill owen was going very well at the time but 12 stone of course is a 
It's a big weight to carry around here. Yes, and uh, you can see Fortina's Express in the picture there, uh, in the yellow colours, yes. and, you know, you thought, well, he's in the right place. Ridley had done what he said. He was going to just hunt round, not bust him along, let him enjoy himself, and I think the plan worked perfectly well. I just don't think he was really good enough on the day. And the grey horse being ridden by Mark Perrett nicely on the inside, pulling here. Yeah, Mark's given him a lovely ride all the way around, gone around the inside. He's always been jumping well, always right up there with the, with the leaders. Just here, I thought he wasn't going to have enough pace to keep going through with it, but he keeps coming on now, just keeping hold of it nicely there. And Master Tursell is in third place. He's run a good race, you know, comes he, from a small stable. He has, run a cracking race, jumped very well. Points pass here and uh, the top weight looked as if it's going to, race is going to be between them, but even with all that class and the 12 stone, it takes a lot of, lot of getting home from here. And Knockhill being squeezed up on the inside rail there, on the inside of the grey horse by Anthony Webber, but look how well the grey is pulling. Yeah, he's going really well now. I think Mark's feeling pretty confident now. He knows the horse will get the trip well, so there's no danger of him dying underneath him. Just got to get the last organised. They're all under pressure, and he's just getting himself in, in fact, the right place. In fact, I'd have thought from the way that Knock Hill's staying on there, he'd probably go for the National next year. I mean, he, I doubt whether he'd reverse with the grey horse, Smith's man. No, but he's, uh, he's on a, as you say, a cracking race and doing his best work at the end. And both nicely handicapped. I mean, it's a terrible lot of weight to get two stone, but he's simply sprinted away here. And, well, Jenny Pittman must be thinking of Aintree as uh, a benefit for her. Definitely. Corbier's takeover partner, so this will be. He's really, really done the job well, hasn't he? And jumped superbly. And, uh, of course, this good ground, he's absolutely finding it to his liking. He won on good ground, although he, I thought he was a soft ground horse. He's won more times than soft than he has uh, on this. This is such good ground here. And it doesn't really matter, does it? And Knock Hill there, just getting up on the inside to touch off Kill Kill Owen. Second number 13, Knock Hill, 16 to 1. Third number 1, Kill Kill Owen, 10 to 1. And fourth number 11, points pass, 